Now, if you're trying to stay awake on night shift, all you really need is a piece of tape. Now, you just simply rip off a little bit of tape, you then connect it to your eyelid, and you just pull it up and stick it on your forehead. Now, you just repeat that on the other side. You just stick it up. So, the initial problem that you had that your eyelids are closed, now it doesn't happen anymore. Now, if this tape option doesn't quite work for you, throughout this video, I'm gonna run through some less traumatic options to help you stay awake when working night shift. Now, in the ideal world, you don't have to watch a video like this because you have slept for seven to nine hours and staying awake on night shift is pretty easy. But we both know that in reality, that doesn't really happen. And even if you have slept for a decent amount of time, you are still probably super sleepy in those early hours of the morning. So throughout this video, I'm going to give you some useful practical tips that you can use when you're actually at work. Let's get stuck into tip number one. The first thing I want you to do right now is to go over to the light switch and turn it on. If you're sitting in the darkness, you need light when you're on night shift. Why? Because your melatonin, our sleep hormone, which helps make us sleepy and that loves the darkness, will start to kick in if you're tired and you're sitting in the dark. We have to basically challenge the melatonin to tell it we are not sleepy yet. So go ahead and turn the light on. If your environment that you're in is naturally dark and you can't, for whatever reason, you can't have lights on, you can buy some LED lamps that you can maybe just plug into the PowerPoint that can artificially give you light to essentially do the same thing. We're trying to stop the melatonin from doing its thing. Now, the next thing I want you to do is go into your bag, get a few little loose coins that you've got in there, then walk over to the vending machine and no, you're not buying junk. Go over there and buy some chewing gum or some chewy. Now, the point of chewy apparently is it stimulates our nervous system and it activates our brain and causes us to be more alert. Now, if you're spoiled for choice in regards to the flavor, choose the peppermint one. Now, I got this recommended to me from a nurse at work who loves her essential oils and said that peppermint is amazing to uplift your mood and it's very energizing. So choose the peppermint one if you do have the option. But if you can't chew chewing gum as part of your job, maybe you work in a call center and it's not very professional to hear chewing on the end of the phone, then brushing your teeth can have a similar uplifting, energizing feeling. So take yourself off to the bathroom, give your fangs a little brush and you might find it's got pretty unbelievable effects. So my next tip is caffeine. I want you to drink it, but I want you to be strategic with when you're consuming caffeine. I'm a huge tea lover and I can't start a night shift without a cup of tea. But the strategy with caffeine is, I've talked about this on many videos before, is you need to stop drinking it about six hours before you intend to go to sleep. So for me, I get home from a night shift at about 8.30 in the morning, sort of nine-ish, so I have to stop drinking it around sort of two, three o'clock in the morning. This may look different for you, so I want you to do the maths and count back for when you should stop drinking coffee or tea or energy drinks, which I don't really want you to drink those because they have an outrageous amount of caffeine in each can. Like those little cans, yes, they might keep you awake for your shift, but there's no way you're going to be able to sleep when you get home and it might even affect you for a few days after. If you're currently addicted to energy drinks or caffeine in general like most of us are, let's be real, we've written an entire blog post to give you some more options on what you can drink when you're on night shift. So jump onto that post and see what you can start bringing to work. If you're enjoying these tips so far and you're getting something out of it, Dan and I would really love to have you join our community. So consider subscribing to this channel and giving us a big thumbs up. Now for our next tip, I want you to look around your desk area. 
is there a drink bottle within reach? Like, I mean a drink bottle with water in it. Not coffee, not tea, not a big energy drink, but an actual bottle or glass of water. If there's not, go and get one. When we're on nights, our body is working against our natural rhythm. It's working against our body clock. So by becoming dehydrated, we are making this process to purely survive much harder than it needs to be. We are 60% water, so becoming dehydrated is making a really tough job for our brain and our heart and all our organs to actually function effectively. So give it a break. Keep a drink bottle handy wherever you're working and keep an eye on your urine. In a recent video we published, which talks about what to do when you're working multiple night shifts in a row, I mentioned that a way to keep track of your hydration levels is to look at the color of your wee. Now, if it's bright yellow, you haven't had enough to drink. So up the fluids, but if it's nice and clear and almost transparent, you're doing well on the hydration scale. So my next tip is about food. Now, while I could talk about food until the cows come home, this video was about staying awake on nights. So what I want you to do is if you're just about to order a pizza, put down the phone. If you're just about to heat up a big, beautiful bowl of pasta, take it out of the microwave. Staying away from really carb heavy type foods on nights will help keep you awake. Switching to something that's a little bit more sustainable, such as veggie sticks that you've maybe already cut to size that you're dipping in some hummus, some oatmeal, um, some homemade protein balls, some Greek yogurt and granola, a handful of nuts, all these sorts of options will give you a little bit more sustainability and you won't get so hungry all the time. Now on our channel, you'll find a video all about night shift food timing. Now, this is an area that nobody talks about and I have no idea why, because it's really important that if we eat the wrong thing, it's gonna cause nausea and bloating and maybe even some chronic digestion problems and I really don't want that for you. So check out that video if you want some more information. But for now, Stay away from the meals that are really high in carbohydrates, breads, pastas, pizzas. I know they're delicious, but save them till your day off because my goodness, the minute you have it, you're just gonna wanna go to sleep. Now, while we're talking about sleep, that is our next tip. It is power nap time. Now, I know not every workplace is set up for allowing their workers to actually go to sleep. So you may have to be a little bit inventive here. Maybe use your car, an office space that isn't used at night. Think outside the square a little bit. Ask your colleagues, they might have some good ideas as well. But to make this snap actually happen, there's a few things you might wanna consider. Now, wearing an eye mask, even though it's dark outside, there are still lights probably around your workplace, so blocking those out can really help. We recently reviewed a bunch of eye masks on our channel and did a full review, so I recommend you check that out. But spoiler alert, the Manta eye mask is our absolute favorite. It's got little eye holes in it so it doesn't push on your eyelashes and it's just divine. So get yourself your favorite eye mask, I'll leave links to this one in the description below this video. Consider getting a weighted blanket. You could even bring one from home or find a blanket or even your jacket that you bought to work. Use that as a blanket or even roll that up as a pillow. Um, and even consider using guided meditation or just really soothing music that can help you get into that relaxed state quicker. So I recommend if you've got a break for half an hour, spend the first 15 minutes eating something, set an alarm and then sleep for the next 15 minutes. If you sleep any longer than that, you might find you wake up feeling really groggy and worse than before. So really set that alarm and don't go over it. Now for this next tip, I want you to stand up, 
and shake your arms and shake your legs around. Depending on where you work and what your night shift environment is will dictate probably how much you can move around. But in some workplaces, I know push-up competitions have worked really well. In an office environment, you might do some bicep curls with a ream of paper, do some jumping jacks or walk up and down the stairs if there are stairs or even just do a couple of laps of your workplace. You gotta get moving. Now, if you forget to move overnight, set your alarm or even make a deal with a colleague that you keep each other accountable. Set a competition to see who can walk the most steps in one night and whoever wins buys the next one a drink when you're on day shift. Make it fun for yourself. Now, this tip might seem a little outrageous and I actually hate this tip, but it works for some people and that is having a cold shower. Now, if you might not even have shower facilities where you work, so obviously just skip this one. But if you do have shower facilities and you are absolutely exhausted and your eyelids just will not stay open, then consider having a cold shower. They are uncomfortably energizing, apparently I wouldn't know. So if you've got the facilities, give it a go. Now I want you to think about how bored you are. Are you falling asleep because your job is so boring? Then you have to take matters into your own hands and create some sort of entertainment for yourself and improve the situation for you. Can you help a colleague who's absolutely swamped with their workload? Or can you go and approach a boss and ask if there's anything different that you could be doing overnight? Maybe don't use the word bored, but just ask if there's maybe an alternative job or something extra you could be doing overnight. Because let's be real, there's only a certain number of solitaire games you can play on your phone before you are falling to sleep. My final tip here is not necessarily one you can use when you're at work, but it's more something to think about before you leave home. And that is calling in sick for the shift. If you are so exhausted, it's almost a safety risk you going to work. As a nurse, if I rock up to work and I am so incredibly tired, I'm gonna make mistakes and I'm not gonna be the nurse that I'm proud of. So it's actually better if I'm not there. So really ask yourself if you are dragging your butt out of bed or you have not slept a wink during the day, is it actually safer if you don't go to work? Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that staying awake on night shift is relatively easy if you've had a good day's sleep. But to actually achieve this can be challenging. But on this channel, you'll find a few videos that we've done which talk all about sleep tips when you're on nights. One in particular is the use of sleep aids. What's our favorite ones, which ones work, and which ones you should spend your money on. So I recommend you checking that out next. Thank you very much for spending your time watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, again, like I mentioned earlier, give us a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And we look forward to seeing you at the next shift.